pretty much doing the same thing as, as far as conceptually. Um, obviously, he when he's in there, he's their guy. He's their number one target. Very explosive receiver. Obviously, we've seen him last year. Uh, one of the best, not just young, but best receivers in the league, even though he's been in there only his second year. But T. Higgins is a guy that's been really stepping up. I always felt like he was a really good receiver, good catch radius, uh, good hands, good arm, good arm length as well. Um, but they have a lot of weapons all around the field. And then you got Joe Mixon in the backfield as well. And Hayden Hurst is playing really well as well. He trusts him across that middle. So uh, Joe Burrow, man, he might not be the guy that always is kind of mentioned with you know, Mahomes or Josh Allen, but he's definitely right up there as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You kind of mentioned it. They do get the running backs involved a lot in the passing game. How much do you guys have to be aware of that? I mean, a lot because, I mean, they're a part of that passing game. And obviously, Samaj P. Ron, I think he scored three touchdowns last week against the Steelers. So um, I know Joe Mixon's in concussion protocols. Not sure if he's going to play or not. But uh, if he can't go, uh, Samaj P. Ron, somebody we have to be aware of in the passing game. For you guys, Kevin, just how much did the rest help? I mean, a lot. I mean, for me, sitting around the house with the kids, watching football. Uh, it, it, like you said, it, it was good to obviously get a win, but even better to be able to chill, knowing that you had a W already going into the week. Uh, definitely felt good, and I think everybody's going to be energized and ready to go this week. So I know it's not a revenge game for many guys in terms of they're not saying that, but right. the fans think of it that way. I mean, now to get them back here, kind of nice to have them here on, on the road again. I mean, it makes sense for the fans to feel like that. I mean, I'm not saying that we are looking at it is just another game, um, but – uh, I hope that the fans really feel that way because they should come out uh, super amped up, uh, tailgating all day, be excited for this game because we're going to need them, uh, especially on third downs because they're really good on third. Got, finally got through the whole, it was kind of a long process going through it. Treatment took a while, some setbacks here and there, but to finally get through it, you know, at one, some point I was thinking, oh, maybe my career might be over because it's taking so long. But then, you know, finally being here, you know, really grateful and really happy and really excited to go back out there and hit some balls. Were you seriously worried that you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to come back from it? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, just that was just a terrible mindset I had at the beginning. Just thinking, like, man, like, not feeling better today. Oh, setback today. Like, you know, so you get in your own head, thinking, like, oh man, this is this is taking longer than it should. But at the end of the day, you know, my body that was my body, and it had to do what it had to do. But yeah, I was, I definitely got down at points. But yeah, it's exciting. So it was very exciting being back, and I'm very excited to go out there and hit the balls again. So when did it start to kind of feel better to realize you were trending in the right direction? Really started feeling better about the end of camp. Kind of early in the season, so a little bit late, but you know, it's, you know I couldn't do. That's all I could do was go in and work with the trainers, work with the strength staff, and do what I could do. But um, yeah, like just a little late into the or early in the season, a little late after camp. But yeah, it was just that's when I started feeling better, and then from there it's just been like a slow progression to get back to a point where I could you know compete and go out there and do my job if needed. So I feel like you're good as about. ever now. Oh, I feel like I feel great. I feel like I've gotten you know back to the point where you know, I was before, and excited to get that that you know that real live work again, trying to get that rhythm, get that timing, and you know get that. Just get that practice in. So it was kind of a freak injury because you, you hit the ground with your foot, right? Yeah, it was totally unexpected. It was feeling great, nothing lighted up to it. Never wasn't thinking, you know, I had no soreness, no pain, nothing. And then, yeah, it was just kind of a weird, or an inc weird incident. So when that happens, you're an undrafted guy. Uh, worries that you know that they might not want to keep you around to let you get healthy. Definitely, yeah. You know, I know with the NFL being a business, a little more in college, I was. My first thought was, man, that's, this might be it. Like my, my career might be over before it even started. So yeah, that was definitely part of you know my, that, that mindset I had. That beginning is just because I was so worried. I didn't know what was going to happen, and then you know, so I had a lot of questions, a lot of a lot of concerns. But you know the you know, organization, coaching staff, and the trainers were so patient and so helpful that you know they instilled a lot of confidence in me during that process. Kind of you know get out of that mindset, get out of that you know that low point. So was there any surgery involved, or just rest and rehab? Just rest and rehab. Yeah, no surgery involved. It was just kind of a. You know, let my body do what it needed to do, and however long it took, however long it took, you know, it's, yeah, it got definitely just took longer than I wanted, but yeah, it was did what I could do, and it was, yeah, it was a long, long process. So. What happened so now? I mean, he just told you just get back out there, kick, and we'll just kind of see what happens yeah. from here. But yeah, just go out yeah. there and hit some balls, and kind of let the coaches make their decisions, and kind of let Randy do whatever you know he's doing. So I know he's going to do what he can to help the team win. So just go out there and give it my best, and try to improve every day. So that's done that on a first-hand experience as a player. As a young pass rusher, you know you come in and you just, you, you make a sensation, make, make get a few sacks and all. Do you notice that opposing defenses are now, or opposing offenses are now trying to counter what you do, and you're having to counter back with them? Is that is that part of it now? Yeah, and I mean, I think just looking all over the league, I think this year guys are just having there's sacks all over the league. A lot of guys having lots of sacks, and it's just um, they happen all throughout the league. So I think offenses um, in general, whether it's me or anyone, they just 
no pass rushers are on a, a mission nowadays, and they have to be able to stop them um, to to be able to compete and uh, have the offense they want. And they, you know, if you don't stop those guys up front, they don't have a chance. Do you try to add to your pass rush repertoire and your moves throughout the course of the season, or is that something you you work on in the off season? Yeah, I think uh, mainly starts in the off season. But for me personally, I'm a guy in camp. You know, every week or two of camp, I have a set of moves, two or three moves that I try to really focus on to have them in my you know, in my bag or in my repertoire. And then during the week based off film and what you think will work best uh, against those offensive tackles, you know, you practice them back in during camp and you can pull them out and um, work them all week so they'll be tuned up for the game. And I think that just, uh, obviously you always have your go-to moves, but when you have that ability to have moves to switch it up at, that you think you will be able to work at a high level, it gives you an advantage. How do you think your offense is done, even though Chase hasn't been in the lineup? Obviously, Burrow still has a lot of weapons he can, he can choose from, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at their uh, ranking and stats on their offense, it's an explosive offense, and it, and it shows. They uh, they point put points up, and they, and they uh, hit huge X plays, big plays down the field, and Joe Burrow likes to sit back there and look for those uh, targets he has on, out on the edge, guys that can really make things happen from Jamar Chase to Boyd, to, uh, Higgins, all those guys. Those are threats all uh, across the field, so... I think, you know, from the front to the back, we'll have to be solid out there and be ready to play a, play a long game. We'll be able to do what we need to do.